Okay, so we had a, I had a kid. Had a kid in sixth grade, like a really, really good kid. Brought something to school that he wasn't supposed to bring because um, he thought it was cool and he wanted to like show off. He's 12 years old. This happens, right? Um, and his consequence was a couple day suspension. So he's like never been in trouble before and didn't know how to like handle being in trouble. And his mom was super upset. So I spent some time on the phone with her just telling her like, this is the right time for a kid to fail, for a kid to have a consequence, for him to not like kind of get disrupted. Like what happens when I don't just do everything perfectly? And she was able to take that, like this is the right time for him to have this experience. But I think that there's a beauty in, in a kid having a space to fail, to mess up, to have to deal with like sometimes I don't do the right thing when he's surrounded by a community that's gonna welcome them and love them back in. Um, totally restored, you made a mistake, it says nothing about who you are. It's so important for a kid to know, it's so important for a family to know that we're gonna love them profoundly mm -hmm. on their worst day. <laughs> You've probably walked a kid through their worst day before, or a family through their worst day, and love them profoundly. Can you think of a story? They're learning how to do school. They're not just learning to read and write. They're learning how to sit in a chair. They're learning how to open their string cheese at lunch, right? Everything. We struggle because doing school, being in the classroom, required a lot of redirection for this particular student. And there are just certain days where you're just constantly redirecting. I can say, though, this student now is up at our Clyde Hill campus and waves to me from across the courtyard, Mrs. Honored, right? And to see that, all that redirection I had to do, all the parent phone calls, all the, the meetings that we had, I can see the fruit of it now. I'm glad you told that because sometimes it's not loving them profoundly on, yeah. in their worst moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just loving them steadily, yes. which is profound, yes. through like a series of just head scratching, frustrating yeah. like little little yeah. moments but there's a yeah. series of them and they just they just kind of go on when i see like that kid i remember he did not want to do the writing assignment <laughs> and i got him to do it by saying write about how much you don't want to write right now <laughs> right write about how much you don't want mrs honor to tell you to write anymore and he wrote 10 pages you know <laughs> and and i'm like there he was as a first grader I don't want to do this thing. No, he's graduating. He's going to college. He's found the thing that makes him want to serve and live for, for God. Remember that it's part of the big picture. Your work is part of what Bellevue Christian is doing, but your work is one year in the life of that student. And there's all these other people plugging into them as well. In my experience, something that I see over and over again is your student on their worst day and I, I have a hard conversation with this student and I go home and thinking like, what's tomorrow gonna be like? You know, like this student, I love him, he loves me, what's tomorrow gonna be like? And time and time again, they come back the next day and they love you more because of how you treated them on their worst day. <laughs>